back the other way. And the GSU TV, boy, they've been working hard trying to get everything back in order. There were some real technical issues there. And that's going to be a blocking foul to charge the Ivy Smith Jr. And they got everything back in order. So kudos to the Allen Blakeney and the technical staff of GSU TV to be able to get everything back in order. And they, they don't get as much credit as, you know, I think they deserve oh, because yeah. they definitely put in a lot of time and a lot of effort. Let me tell you something. Yeah. I sat in the truck during one of the programs that we had here at Grambling just to see what it was like in order to run the switcher and all of that. I got yelled at. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? I did get yelled at a little bit. Not much, but just a little bit. Because I, I accidentally switched a camera. I was going to switch a camera that was live and shouldn't have done that. But that's why, that's why I like doing stuff like that to learn. Free throw is no good. Devontae Jackson comes down with it. Grambling going back the other way now. Ivy Smith, three-pointer on the way. No good. Whoa, and Dallas Polk Hilliard mistimed that jump. Doss gets the rebound. And a jump ball. Possession no, goes to Pablo. They, they got a foul. It's going to be on Ivy Smith then. Because he fell right on top of him. And Ivy can't believe it. We have a media timeout. 41-33 the score. We'll take this timeout. One minute timeout. We'll be right back here on the Grammy Sports Radio Network and GSU TV. Welcome back here to the Frederick C. Hobby Assembly Center here on the campus of Grambling State University. And Donovan, I know you had a chance to interview a couple of alums who are at every single basketball game. Yes, Doris Marzi and Larry Drayton. Coming here since 66. Wow. They were actually students here, but they were coming to Grambling games way before they were even students here. So, you know, I talked to them, and they were. Uh, Ms. Marzi actually told me she has been coming here since the Assembly Center was built. Wow. And, you know, Larry Drayton, he played a lot of sports in his past. Of course, he, he didn't play at Grambling, but he, uh, you know, played a lot of sports in his past. And he actually admires the women's side of the basketball team more than anything else. Because, you know, he grew up, he liked, he, of course, he likes the men's team. He likes the football team, he likes the baseball team. But he, oh, he has a fascination and he's just appreciation for, you know, the women's basketball team here. Bobby Smith Jr. to Devontae Jackson. Now he draws a double team. Jackson gives it up. Foul coming up. Going back to, you know, talking about super fans. They've been sitting in the same seats of Section 106 right behind us. Ever since I've gotten here, because I've definitely noticed them when I first got here. Axel Emporio for another the jam. Goal. Axel Emporio with another jam. And another shot clock, technical difficulty. Yep. And you can tell it's kind of frustrating for the officials as well. And you know, the thing is, is that it's not necessarily the operator issue, it could be clock issue. And that's one thing you gotta remember. It's not always about who's operating the clock, it's sometimes about the actual Wiring clock. of the clock, yeah. yes. Three-pointer up, no good. And A.J. Gaston with the rebound. 43-33, Grambling on top. 
14-40 remaining here in the ball game. Another jam by Employo. As three dunks, and you can watch the official coming down. He just kind of smiled and said, just been a, wide open underneath the paint. How much, how much room are they going to give him? And he comes back with another block on the defensive end. Well, he is having a monster game. Alex Empoyo, seven points. He's got a block now. Three of six of those points coming off of dunks. And that was a bad pass by A.J. Gaston. A near steal. Doss coming away with it. Gets it out to McKnight. McKnight goes in for the shot. Up, no good. Rebound of the put back five. Doss is good. And remember, this Pond Bluff team, extremely long. The only players that are below the, the height of six feet are two players who have not played yet. Anthony Davis and Jordan McNair. Everybody else, 6'1 and above. It's actually 6'2 and above. Wow, coming up. Looks like that's going to be on Jackson for Arkansas Pine Bluff. His first. Excuse me, his second. Alex and Poyo will shoot a couple here. No, nope, it'll actually be out of bounds. It was on the floor. Ivy Smith will drive, shoot, can't get the shot. McKnight with the rebound, and he pushes the ball. Shot goes up, good. Got a soft touch. Timeout, Pine Bluff. It's going to be a full timeout here, 45-37 to score. Full timeout. We'll take this timeout, one-minute timeout. We're going to take this break on the Grounded Sports Radio Network. We'll be right back. Dallas Polk Hilliard gets it off to Nigel Ribeiro, who's back in the ball game. Nigel Ribeiro for three, no good off the mark. Coming down with the rebound is Isaac Bassey. out of bounds, grounding basketball, and now Prince Moss Jr. coming back into the basketball game. <laughs> Alex and Poyo with the basketball. Five second violation. That was just good defense by Pond Bluff. And George Ivory gets up and he has to talk to Hardy for a minute.
And you can see there's just pressure defense put on by Pine Bluff. Trying to bring the pressure, trying to force turnovers. Find a way to That's get back into this game. Massey doesn't feel like it was, but. Ivy Smith coming into the ball game, replacing Prince Moss. The full court pressure now put on by Von Bluff. We go full court press back to zone. Nice pick set by Empoyo. Vontae Jackson is going to travel. Can't be mad at that at all. Media timeout on the floor Media with the score. The Grambling Tigers, 45. Arkansas Pablo, 37. A trip to the semifinals on the line. We'll take this one-minute timeout. We'll be right back. over Arkansas over uh, Texas Southern 72 to 61 and now Arkansas Pine Bluff on the floor here as well and Grambling right now on top field 45 37 but still plenty of basketball left to be played 11 46 remaining here in this first half of play that's in the ball game rather Jackson with the basketball oh nearly loses it Hardy back to Jackson 12 on the shot clock McKnight with the basketball Back to Jackson. Jackson takes a stutter step, goes into the to the rim, no good. Prince Moss going up high for the rebound. Boy, he's got a lot of hops. Prince Moss is six seven and moves like a guard almost. Shot up, no good. Good decision by Empoyo not to go over the back. McKnight with the basketball. Quite a few seniors on this team. Charles Jackson, a senior. Hardy is a senior. McKnight is a senior. Now Ivy Smith with the basketball right side of Prince Moss. 45-37, 10-22 remaining in the game. Then Poyo goes up for the shot, no good. Ball is tipped and McKnight comes away with it. Charles Jackson, 6'5", senior from Cleveland, Mississippi. Oh, almost a foul by Ivy Smith Jr. Carter has the basketball now looking on the inside, wide open. And that is going to be Christian Robertson, a 6'4 graduate student from Monticello. And Christian. Robertson lost, lost the shoot. Yeah, so now he has to try and hurry up and put that back on. Mm -hmm. 
Nigel Ribeiro now with the basketball. That's double dribbling. Oh, they're going to call a foul on Hardy. <laughs> and I don't know if you heard it, but uh, Robinson came over here and said, I swear y'all cheating. And the official had some words for him, too. officiating crew reminds me of a crew that you would almost want to just have a foul called you because they, they get after you they scold you yeah they, they'll, they'll let you know it's like you, you want to say you sure you want to say something else McKnight going down trying to get the bucket no good Robertson with the putback and as you can hear the Arkansas Pine Bluff crowd that made the trip they're making noise now 45 41 now Grambling with just a four-point lead 9 15 remaining in the ball game And it's going to be a timeout grambling. Needed timeout here to settle nerves down as well. And one of the officials going over to Coach George Ivory to tell him, hey, you got to watch your player's mouth and you tell him if you say something else, he's going to get a technical foul. And Coach Ivory is right in the face of his player. to the official. That's old school basketball <laughs> right there. Prince Moss with the shot up no good. Ball tipped around. Out of bounds back to Grambling. That is old school basketball because the officials have been in the face of the players like, hey, hey, you're going to calm that down. Otherwise, you're not going to be here. And he went over and told George Ivory, he said, you can tell your player that the next time he says something like that, he's going to be sitting down. Old school basketball. That's old school for sure. Grambling basketball. That's, that's a offensive foul. Can be charged to Ivy Smith. That's his first. I'm not gonna lie. I can't be mad at this officiating crew. This has not been a pretty good ball game. It's, it's been pretty fair. Forty-five, forty-one. 8.46 remaining in the ball game. Pond Bluff trying to get within two or possibly one here. Jackson for three on the way. No good. Ball tipped. Goes out of bounds. Back to Graham. Well, these officials have swallowed their whistles on a lot of things that they could have called technical for or fouls for. They really let these guys play. Got to give credit where credit is due. They understand the severity of this ball game. That kick ball violation off of Pond Bluff. It'll go back to Grambling. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Lee McNair coming into the ball game. Jordan McNair, one of the, the smallest players of the basketball team. 5'8", Richard sophomore from Jacksonville, Arkansas. Pondla really has a good crowd that has come over to this ball game on Tuesday night. Devontae Jackson shot up good. 47-41, Grambling on top. He's, he's working for it, earning every point he gets. We are now under eight minutes. McKnight for three, no good. Skying in for the rebound. Devontae Jackson lost it, and it goes back to Ivy Smith.
AJ Gaston to lead. Avi Smith. Hurt goes in for the shot and he's fouled. And that's going to be charged to Charles Jackson. And we have a media timeout on the floor with the score. The Grambling Tigers, 47, Pond Bluff, 41. Who's going to go to the semifinals coming up on Friday? Up on the other side, really enjoying the camaraderie and battling each other. There's actually a little section of Grambling fans in that sea of Arkansas Pine Bluff fans, so it's definitely been a little hectic over there. Xavier Park, first free throw, he's got to make those. Got to make the throws, got to make the throws. Grambling now only 15 of 18 from the free throw line, as opposed to Arkansas Pine Bluff, 7 for 16. Yeah, Pine Bluff missed quite a few. 16 for 19. That's not bad if you're Grambling. Devontae Jackson, who normally is a 68% free throw shooter, he is 6 for 6 tonight. Carter with the basketball. 7-17 remaining in this ball game. McKnight with the basketball. Bounce pass to Carter. Not a DOS to Jackson. Jackson up good. 48-43 now. Much to the liking of Coach George Ivory. Nigel Rivera going for the sh going in. Back out to Empoyo. Shot no good. Part with the rebound. Fresh 30. Part shot no good. Two throws coming up. Technical foul on Pine Bluff. Is that on the coach? Yeah, it's going to be technical foul on George Ivory. Question is, with the early technical foul that he had. Because it was a team technical. Yeah. Let's see what happens here. AJ Gaston will shoot the free throws. 81% free throw shooter. Best free throw shooter on the team. First free throw is good for A.J. Gaston. But Pine Bluff with a team tech. And now Ivory with a tech. A.J. Gaston with two free throws. And now the two free throws coming up for Xavier Park because he was fouled. Oh, 
Oh, Xavier missed the first one. One more free throw at the line. And he makes that one one of two. So now it's back up to an eight point lead. 628 remaining in the ball game. And Grambling has been to the line, what, 21 times now? I think so. Carter with the shot up, no good. Skyen for the rebound. Dolph blocked out of there by Empoyo. <laughs> Nigel Ribeiro thought about the three and then backed out. 21 left on the shot clock. 6.05 remaining in the game. Could the men and the women both be moving on to Birmingham? McKnight faded away. Partially blocked there by Jackson. And Pine Bluff comes away with the basketball. Now McKnight controlling. Charles Jackson for three. No good. Dallas Polk Hilliard with the rebound. Snatching it away from Carter. Markel Carter, the 6'6 junior from Greenville, Mississippi. Transferred from Holmes Community College. Gaston out of Empoyo. 528 remaining in the ball game. Dallas Polk Hilliard. Out of bounds off of Grambling, and it goes to Pine Bluff. Devontae Jackson coming in the ball game for Grambling, coming in for Pine Bluff. Marcus Wallace, the guard from Jackson, went to Provine High School. He was also recruited by Jackson State. Decided to come to Pine Bluff for the coach George Ivory. Wallace with the ball, now right side to Carter. Three-pointer by McKnight on the way, buries it. And remember, McKnight is the one that can heat up really quick. You don't want that to happen. He's only got seven, 51-46. 4.58 remaining in the ball game. The key here is keep the ball out of Pine Bluff's hands, especially McKnight. Dangerous at the end of the game. Cole Killier. And it's going to be a foul coming up on... Pond Bluff. This time it's going to be on Marcus Wallace, his first personal. Wallace got that foul because he swung down and hit the hand. They're actually going to say it's against Terrence Banyard, and that's going to be his four. That'll be four then, yeah. That's, that, is, that is right. Banyard is going to be charged with the foul. That's his fourth personal. Scratched the foul then by Wallace. Shot up good. Front end of the one and one is good. He's seven for seven. Talk about an impressive night so far at the line. He's just got to keep that up. 52 46. Second free throw won't go. Carter inside. Banyard with a shot, no good, and Devontae Jackson's going to pick up the foul. That's his first person. Jackson's got nine, seven of those at the free throw line. I believe eight at the free throw line now. Ivy Smith in double figures. He's got ten. Banyard at the free throw line. First free throw is good. He's shooting 69%. McKnight, Dawson, Banyard leading free throw shooters on this team. McKnight, Jackson, and Dawson leading three-point shooters on the team. That's something to remember as we continue down this game. 52-47 with four and a half remaining. You got to be careful who you're putting on the free throw line and leaving open at the three-point line. No lead is safe in the tournament. Nigel Ribeiro, nice fake. Getting Mc... there off his feet. Now to Dallas Polk Hillier. Bounce pass to the right, left side to Alex Empoyo. Foul coming up. And that's going to be on Charles Jackson. That's his third. Good ball movement all around 
by Grambling, able to get the ball to the inside, finally able to draw a foul. So now free throw is coming. And Pollo with the free throw, good. One more free throw here for Alex and Pollo. And Pollo now two of three from the line today. Second free throw, good. Big crowd for here on a Tuesday night. Double header. Good fan support from Pond Bluff. Pretty decent from Texas Southern. Of course, Grand Fam always showing up. Jackson three-pointer on the way, no good. A.J. Gaston coming away with it. He's going to push the ball. Gets it out to Nigel Rivero, and Rivero pulls back. Not mad at that decision by Nigel Rivero at all. No need to have that. Waste as much time as you can while you still have the lead. Of course, the, the crowd will tell you otherwise. So A.J. Gaston, five left on the shot clock. Gaston coming up, can't hit the bucket, but draws a foul. That's why you make that decision. If you are Nigel Rivero, that's a senior decision. I know the crowd didn't like it. That was a senior decision that killed 23 seconds off of the clock. I believe that's five. And that is going to be five on Banyard. And he's gone from the game now. And so Banyard is out, one of the starters. He's a sophomore. And we have a timeout on the floor with the score, Grambling 54, Pond Bluff 48. 3.30 remaining in the game. We'll take this timeout. We'll be right back. Be able to cash in right now. You got one of the most dangerous players in the swag on the floor that can go off at any point. McKnight going on the baseline into the corner. Nice block there by Devontae Jackson. That was huge for Grambling. Absolutely. Now you have an opportunity to kill more time off the clock now. And that's what Ivy Smith is doing. He's just kind of standing out there. Second team all swag. McKnight first team all swag. Three-pointer on the way. No, oh, no good. They call it a jump ball back to Pine Bluff. When was the last time you saw the ball stuck between the rim and the buck in the backboard? I actually haven't seen it since I've been, a minute. been here at Grambling, so. Swag Basketball Conference honors. Jeremy Combs, Player of the Year. Dennis Jones from Prairie View, Defensive Player of the Year. McKinnis 
freshman of the year from Jackson. Combs, newcomer of the year from Texas Southern. Byron Smith, coach of the year from Prairie View. McKnight taking that baseline. He's going up and in with that. This is where he puts the, puts the team on his back. 54-50. Starting to become a dangerous player. Only has nine points in the game, but he can change. He can flip a switch. That's, that's the guy you want to watch there. And he's pointing traffic. Devontae Jackson will dribble. Going in on McDyce. Shot is up. Good. Boy, Devontae Jackson having a big game for the Grambling Tigers. He's got 11. Two minutes left in the game. Grambling up six. 56-50. Dallas Polk Killier poked the ball out of bounds after the Jackson pass. Stays with Pine Bluff. Could we see a double, another double header in Birmingham? 15 seconds left on the shot clock now for Pine Bluff. Blocking foul charge to Grambling. It's going to be on Ivy, Ivy. Smith, and wow. that's his fifth. So wow. Ivy Smith is out of the game now. <laughs> Ivy Smith finishes the day with 10 points. Didn't agree with the call, but he came off graciously and didn't put up a fuss. And now it rests on the hands of the senior, Nigel Rivero, to run the point duties. So Banger checked out with five fouls. Ivy Smith now with five fouls. First free throw is up and good. McKnight at the free throw line. We know he can shoot free throws. 71% at the line. Second free throw, good. Doss comes out, Hardy comes in. That's offense for defense. Hardy comes in and plays defense. Nice move by Nigel Ribeiro. Full court pressure put on. Dallas Polk here, not in Poyo. Over to Devontae Jackson, goes in for the top. And a foul coming up. Both players going down hard. And one of the players from Pablo Carter a little slower getting up. And Devontae Jackson was on his way in to posterize Carter. That was going to be hung up in somebody's bedroom. Wow. Not shying away from contact, straight explosiveness. Carter with one. We're watching that again. I think he had a little different angle. He, he may have put a highlight on him. And the first miss for Devontae Jackson. 56-52 is the score. A minute 33 remaining. Hardy comes out. Doss comes in. Bring in bringing in the offense. Second free throw is good. 130 remaining, 57-52, Grambling up right now. Good decision there by A.J. Gaston. Make McKnight pick the basketball up. Little things like that can help you win the ball game. McNair to Doss. Doss back to McNair, left side to Jackson. McNair at the three-point line. Doss high up on the three-point line, right side. Now they swing it to McNair. Three-pointer long. No good. Jackson with the rebound for Grambling. 113 remaining in the game. Nigel Ribeiro with the ball. A.J. Gaston getting the ball across the half-court line. It's going to be a 10-second violation. 10-second violation. Charge to Grambling. It goes back to Pond Bluff. 57-52. 104 remaining in this ball game. Five points is a lot closer than you think. A lot. When you've got McKnight on the floor, he can hit a three-pointer from anywhere. One minute remaining in the game. Three-pointer by Jackson. 
No good. Ball is stripped out of the hands of a Pine Bluff player. <coughs> and a foul is going to be charged to Arkansas Pine Bluff. That's going to be charged to McKnight. And that's his first. Grambling in the double bonus now, so that's going to send Nigel Ribeiro to the free throw line. R Nigel Ribeiro had the position, and McKnight had to go and hug him. Two huge free throws for Grambling. 52 seconds remaining in the ball game. A trip to the semifinals on the line. First free throw for Ribeiro off the back of the iron. That's, this is his first trip to the line, so you got to wonder if there was a little rust on him for free throws. Ribeiro not been shooting well from the charity stripe, not as well as he's wanted to. He's still 59%. Needs this one. It goes in and, and out. Five-point lead. McKnight with the basketball inside to Carter. Carter goes up for the shot. It's blocked out of there by Empoyo. Ball is on the floor. Timeout, Pine Bluff with 41 seconds remaining. <coughs> Heads up basketball by Empoyo because it was nearly a jump ball. Actually, it was Carter that really had to hold on to the basketball. If that would have been a jump ball, it would have went back to Grambling. 30-second timeout. We'll keep it right here. And look at the sights and sounds of this game. If you are watching television, you got the Pond Look having a great time here at the Assembly Center. Oh, that crowd behind the scores table really having fun. Forty one point eight remaining in the ball game. The Grambling Tigers trying to get to the conference tournament semifinals. AJ Gaston all over McKnight. McKnight with the basketball, takes it himself. Shot up no good. Dallas Polk Hilliard with the rebound. And a foul coming up on Pine Bluff. And that's going to be charged to Doss. 31 seconds remaining. Doss with his fourth personal. Dallas Polk Hilliard needs these two throws. 62% free throw shooter. Coming into the game, 55 for 88. First free throw, good. Two possession ball game now for the Grambling Tigers. They need one more free throw, and it'll be a three possession ball game. The key is no fouls on the other side, D. Travis. Absolutely no reason to foul on the other end at all. Arkansas Pine Bluff is going to work fast now. A.J. Gaston coming up on McNair to make him pick the ball up. Now to Doss. Doss driving, shooting, miss. A.J. Gaston with the rebound. 24 seconds remaining. Nigel Rivera with the basketball. Missed, fired. McNair comes up with the rebound. Ball is up, no good on the three-pointer. A.J. Gaston with the basketball. Ten seconds remaining. Gaston comes across the half-court line. Nada Jackson, five seconds remaining. Four seconds remaining. And ladies and gentlemen, your Grambling Tigers are in the semifinals of the Southwestern Athletic Conference Championship game Friday afternoon. 230 in Birmingham. What a game by these Grambling Tigers showing resiliency against a tough Arkansas Pine Bluff team. 59-52, the final score. Birmingham is going to be dripping in black and gold. Unbelievable. And for these seniors at Grambling State University, they will remember their final home game as a victorious one. We'll take a two-minute timeout. And when we come back, we'll have Coach Dante Jackson on from the Grambling State University Tigers talking about the big win against Pond Bluff. Two-minute timeout. We'll be right back.
see the final score. Joining us here is the head coach of the Grambling Tigers, uh, head coach Dante Jackson. And coach, big game here for the Grambling Tigers. And one of the biggest issues that you talked about is two halves. Two halves. And they were able to complete two halves. Yes, we found a way to complete two halves. And, you know, honestly, you can't, you got to thank the crowd. Yeah. You know, like just having this energy inside the building today was, was, was magnificent. You know, when we weren't playing well and everybody started chanting defense, it just pushed us over the top. Absolutely. Ivy Smith, of course, one of the big guys. But Devontae Jackson, as you was watching here on the replay, he had some big shots, big free throws as well. Big moment. Big moment. You know, big players come up big in big moments. And, you know, he took us home. You know, same way against Alabama A&M, he took us home. And, you know, when we get down the stretch, we know that, Either him or Ivy got to close the game. And, you know, he found a way to make some big shots, make free throws, and then even defensive stops and rebounds at the end. The other thing that I was impressed with is a senior decision by Nigel Ribeiro. Had an open lane, he could have challenged and gotten the foul, but he backed the ball out, and really it took about 26 seconds off of the game clock. That was a big senior decision. Big time senior decision because right now, you know, you're up four, uh, five, six points, and you want to get the best shot available. So, you know, him being a, a 5'10 guard trying to challenge a 6'8 guy at the rim probably wasn't the best thing we needed. So he pulled it out, and we ended up getting the foul out the situation to make a two free throw. So big-time decision-making at the end for him. Get ready to go to Birmingham. It'll be a doubleheader. Grambling women at 12, men at 2.30. All Grambling affair Friday afternoon. You know, one game at a time. You know, we got to go figure it out. Uh, we got to clean up this last three minutes. <laughs> yeah. At this half, uh, making free throws. We did a great job early making free throws, and we got to finish up making free throws. Well, Coach... You talked about finishing. First step is in the books, and that's getting a home game, winning in the, in the quarterfinals, now off to the semifinals, one step at a time to the mission. As Jim Valvano says, survive in advance. Exactly. Doesn't matter how pretty, it just matters that you do it. As long as you do it. <laughs> Coach Jackson, thank you so much. Thank you. The Grambling Tigers, of course, winning today over Arkansas Pine Bluff by the score of 59-52. to 52. And I think Amaya is going to be on the court. He, she's with Axel and Poyo here in just a second. The final score, 59-52. Amaya uh, Ash is going to be with uh, Alex and Poyo, as a matter of fact. And Hello. Let's... So I'm here with Axel, player number 11. And so tell me, how does it feel being a senior and knowing that this was your last time coming out on your home court? Oh, uh, it's crazy. Uh, all the hard work we put in on this court, it's crazy knowing that this was the last game. But we just we knew we had to come and get it. We had to win. So. So how does it feel knowing that y'all are going to the semifinals? So last year, y'all were able to qualify for NCAA, but this year y'all are. So going into the semifinal round, is there a little more pressure on the team in the air, or is it pretty normal? Um, it's not. I wouldn't say pressure. I mean, we know what we can do. We just got to come out and do what we, we know what we can do. So we got to go get the ring. So, so last time y'all played Pine Bluff, y'all had a different result. Do you think that the crowd support helped y'all today? Or do you think it was just the, the fact that y'all had to get to the Birmingham? I think I think it's a little bit of both. The crowd definitely helped. Uh, there's a lot of people in here today, so that definitely got us got us hype, got gave us energy. So. Well, we definitely saw your energy on the court. I want to thank you for coming out and definitely uh, give us you very much good luck in Birmingham. My name is Amaya Ash, and I'm here at GSU TV. All right, thanks, Amaya. We'll take a two-minute time out. And when we come back on GSU Radio, we will close things out for our GSU TV crew. Thank you so much for joining us throughout the 2018 through 2019 season. We thank you. We appreciate you. Thanks to the entire crew who have made us look extremely good and have done just yeoman's work this year. Without them, there'd be no us. For the radio crew, we'll be back in two minutes right here on the Grambling Sports Radio Network for GSU TV. Always remember, one nation, one people. Peace.